What's going on everybody? Welcome to part four of our Python for Finance tutorial. What we're going to be talking about in this tutorial is resampling our data since it's a really useful uh, operation that we can do with pandas. Also, because of resample, we can also create a candlestick all in one tutorial. So it'll be great. So what we're going to do is like in the previous tutorial, we did this nice manipulation of this column. That's great. But for now, I'm going to comment it out. Also, we're not going to graph this information. We are going to keep the axes because that's relatively useful. Now, um, and then we're not going to do the head for now. Actually, we'll just uh, delete that. So the first thing that we're going to do is uh, do a resample. The idea of a resample with pandas is you can take some information and resample it to, you, you could resample it down, but it won't work. <laughs> but you can also resample it greater. So for example, let's say you have sensors that collect data about the temperature and humidity of your servers. And they just kind of randomly collect data. Um, or probably a better term or a better idea, okay, in your little, in your business, you want to count how many people walk through a doorway. This is very random, right? The people that might walk through and, and your real curiosity is like how many people come through an hour, okay? But you've got data that comes through maybe every minute or every two minutes sometimes or three minutes or whatever, but you really care about that hourly number. What you could do if you had a data frame that just contained columns of people walking through, um, you could resample it. You could resample it to one hour of data. So it would take all the data, resample it to one hour. If you use a resample sum, um, it would add them all up and it would tell you, okay, every hour, this is how many people you get. With stock information, we have currently daily data, but we're going to resample it to 10 day data. So if you have huge data that you don't need to be huge, for example, if this was like tick data that was like millisecond data and we didn't need to be working with millisecond data, we could resample that data to one day data like we have or 10 day data or just minute data. So you have a ton of options here. So let's go ahead and do that. So when you, the, there's kind of two things that we're going to do here. Generally, when you resample, you're probably going to make a new data frame. So first, let's do df underscore OHLC. This will be its own data frame. And we're going to say this is equal to df ADJ close for just a close dot resample. And then in here, just like with rolling, you put a window, um, basically. So we're going to go with 10D for 10 days. We could do 10 min. We could do um, 6 min. We could do any number we want. And you could, there's all kind. You could do a weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, at the beginning of the month, the end of the month, all kinds of stuff. But for now, we'll just resample the 10 days. Um, and then here, you could say you want to get the mean, the average value over 10 days. So this is not the same as a rolling, right, 10 day. It's This isn't a 10 moving average because it's not a moving average. It's just like every 10 days it takes the mean. So it's actually going to significantly shrink the size of the data set. Um, so you could do mean, you could do sum, the total value, or in our case, we're going to do OHLC for open, high, low, close, and this will create data that is open, high, low, close. Yes, we are starting with open, high, low, close data. Yes, Tesla never had a stock split. So in theory, we could have skipped this step, uh, but a lot of companies do have stock splits and you won't be able to use that data. You're going to have to create your own based on the adjusted close. So um, there you have that. Now. What we're going to say is we're going to also do this with volume. So df dot or df underscore volume is going to be equal to df volume. And then again, we're going to resample by 10 days. And in this case, we'll use sum. You, you probably could use mean. I think sum makes a little more sense. So I'm going to use sum because that's tr the true volume, not the average volume over 10 days. You probably really want the true volume. Now let's go ahead and print. Uh, df underscore OHLC, just so we can see what we're dealing with. <clears throat> we are not going to run plt.show for now. And let's go ahead and run that. So there you have it. It's open, high, low, close based on every 10 days of data. Um, and date is the index. In our case, we actually don't want that, that to be the case because we are going to use matplotlib's candlestick OHLC. While I'm thinking about it, let's go ahead and import that because I'm going to forget. So from matplotlib.finance, we're going to import candlestick underscore OHLC. Um, and then we're also going to import, import matplotlib.m, no, matplotlib.dates as mdates for matplotlib dates. 
because Matplotlib does not use date time dates for whatever nonsensical reason. They use these like, it's like 700,000. It's not Unix time, it's, uh, who, I don't know. I have no idea. I have no idea why they use M dates. It's unfortunate. So, um, okay, so we've got the head. Now what Candlestick OHLC wants from us is actually not just simply OHLC. It wants date in M dates format, date, open, high, low, close. So it wants all of those things. So the way that we're gonna do that or generate that is like you can get all of the contents of a data frame, which is by just by doing like df.values, but that will not give you the column headers or the index. So the first thing we wanna do is reset the index for dfohlc so that date is now a column. So the way we do that is, uh, let's see, uh, D, I think we can actually just do df, I can't remember if this will, happen in place or not dot reset index let's try it in place equals true um, and then we'll print this dot head let's see <clears throat> that works sure enough it does so we can modify that in place cool uh, okay so we've got date now we need to convert it to m dates <laughs> so <laughs> so the way we're going to do that is we're going to say df uh, just copy this paste date is going to be equal to this dot map and in this case we're not we're not doing a fancy mapping of any functions so like we're not trying to pass any parameters so this is going to work just dot map and then pass m dates dot date to num so this will convert our date time um, object to an, a silly m date number which will be like like i said like 700,000. Okay, so for example, let's, now that we've seen, and now that we've done the conversion, let's just do this, just so you can see what I'm talking about. Right, oh, great, 733.952. That's a date to matplotlib. <laughs> okay, so now what we're gonna do is we've got the columns here, or the uh, axes, I don't know what I call the columns. We've got the axes, we don't need to print this. Uh, we are gonna do ax1.x axes dot, or underscore date. That will basically take these m dates dot date to num or basically the m dates and display them as beautiful dates. Thanks, Matplotlib. So we've got that. Now what we're gonna do is do candlestick ohlc. What axes ax1 and then what's the data? Df underscore ohlc dot values and then we're gonna say width equals two. That's just how thick are the little candlesticks themselves. Color up equals G for green, I think the default is black up, red down, but this will make green up, red down. And then since we have AX2, we're gonna put volume on it, but rather than doing the bar, we're gonna do AX2.fill underscore between. And we're gonna fill between basically DF underscore volume dot index, that's your X. Um, and oh, unfortunately, we also have to do this whole map nonsense. So let's just copy this, copy, df volume.index dot map. So that's your x. Um, and then base. And then what are we going to? Um, what's going to be your your y data basically? So what? And then between what? So df underscore. Did we do volume? Yeah, we did right here with some df volume dot values and then zero and that will um, that'll fill this is your X this is your Y and it will fill from zero to the Y it's just a little easier to see things I think this way okay let's uh, see if we get a result no did I forget I probably forgot a like a Let's see, what do we got? Fill between, ah, this. This needs to close here. And then, okay, let's try this again. Great. So now we've got this beautiful open, high, low, close candlestick graph. So the idea of candlestick graphs is they kind of condense direction, open, high, low, and close data all in like one pretty simple line. So, um, so here we can see, like for example, this is the low point, this is your open, 
Um, or it could be, in this case, this would be open, this is closed, because the price went up, but in this case, this was open, this was closed, this was also the high, this was the low, it closed above the low. Uh, so once you get used to reading them, uh, they're pretty useful because they're just so condensed yet have so much information to them. Um, and a lot of people like to read the charts. Not someone who buys into that, but uh, they are very descriptive nonetheless. And as you can see, we got this nice fill between. Rather than the bars, it's a lot easier to see that. Oops, I zoomed in. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's that. If you have questions, comments, concerns, whatever, uh, do feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, we're going to be getting into uh, more kind of complex manipulations and eventually adding much more data to uh, what we've got. Because right now we're dealing with just one stock, but our end goal is actually to bring in all of the S&P 500, combine them all into one data frame and start actually running something that's going to give us kind of a relationship of all these companies. So that's what we're going to be doing in the uh, coming tutorials. If you have questions, comments, concerns, whatever, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, I will see you in the next tutorial.